Hello YouTube, this is Ben Gessel. Um, I was um, this evening expecting some folks from my church, we're calling it, it's, it used to be called home teaching, now it's called ministering, but I was expecting some gentlemen to come over to my place and chat about uh, all things, all things about how I'm doing and uh, spiritual stuff a little bit and you know all that good stuff so they're not gonna make it tonight um, but that being said um, <laughs> what's my segue into my main topic here well I was just you know today um, I might make some other videos tonight we'll see I, I have to do some stuff tomorrow later morning but um, and I have fans on I do apologize it's it's been a very hot, miserable summer again, but I think I've managed to keep my head on straight, maybe a little better than other very hot summers in the past. With air conditioning, it's always a bit of a feat to pull off, and I'm glad we're at the close of this kind of thing. Believe me, folks, there's a lot to mention. I, again, I know I'll get to the music videos as soon as I have some chunk of time. Uh, just stay with, just bear with me. I'm sorry about that. So. But in this video, I'm going to talk a little bit about um, I'm called character and comedians. Character and comedians, and I'm you know going to go through. I mentioned a while back what I I think about certain comedians. I think or some general thoughts on them. But I'm going to go into some more detail about uh, comedians in particular, but also maybe similar kinds of actors and things. But there's a reason why I'm, I'm mentioning this in particular. Uh, I might focus a bit more on Jerry Lewis, insofar as I understand what he's like, because I realize that this is an earlier kind of generation thing, and those of us born after a certain period of time, for depending on how old certain actors uh, or comedians or entertainers are, some of us just will know about them only via, again, YouTube or asking our parents or grandparents or whatever about them. But Jerry Lewis is old enough now where the only people that know really remember him more vividly, I suppose, would be, well, I, I don't know, in a way, it'd be basically anybody older than me. <laughs> so, unless you follow YouTube a lot, you follow Jerry Lewis a lot. And, you know, so, okay. So let's talk about Jerry Lewis first, and we'll go bit by bit through these different guys. And this, again, this video is kind of all about character and comedians. So, when you're talking about character and things like morality and spirituality and righteousness and sin and good and evil and integrity and all these things, everything that a person says, you know, there's an, an equal, equally barbed arrow pointed right back at them. So, it's, it's not like, you know, it's easy to think that I'm you know, throwing cred on these different people. Believe me, I'm, I don't have a bone to pick with any comedian. I mean, because I don't know these guys personally. That makes it a lot easier. But um, I really don't, I don't dislike any of these guys. There's nothing, there's no dog in the fight for me in this regard. Um, it's easy to dislike someone that you know from personal experience, you know, someone you know in your life that has done something that's extremely not cool. It's easy to hold on to that anger. But this is this is not that case. In this case, we're just talking about people in Hollywood, basically, and focusing on comedians. So I just want that to be understood. by right? two things again that I understand that when you're talking about character, there's for everything you say, there's not only an equal, equally barbed arrow pointed at you. But also that, you know, you could, in fact, if something was not true or especially harmful to someone's character, and you say you could be sued for libel and stuff. I, I under, totally understand that stuff. You, you know, heck, even if a person's dead, someone's relative that doesn't like what you say, you know, they can take you to court. So I understand all this stuff. And this is, you know, this is YouTube. It's not completely private. So I understand all that. And so believe me, it's, it's not like... And the other part of that... Um, no, anyway, I think I've made my point so far on this regard. So, um, getting back to Jerry Lewis here. So apparently Jerry Lewis, as is common knowledge, if you look this up, 
Uh, one of the things that everybody's talking about is he left in his will, he didn't leave anything to his sons, uh, his five sons. And he left everything, his estate, whatever, to one of his a different person he was married to and her girl or something. And I don't know why he did that. That's anyone's guess. I haven't, you know, he hasn't, I haven't seen an interview yet. And if there is one out there, I just haven't seen it where he talks about that sort of thing. But I imagine Jerry Lewis would probably be pretty close-lipped about this sort of thing. Or if he did mention anything about it, it would be only kind of the general stuff. Um, nothing in particular, nothing going into depth. I imagine that on some level, and this is only, then I'm only speculating at this point. I'm only speculating that um, somehow his sons disappointed him. Somehow his sons didn't do something or weren't the people that merited him giving them anything to his sons. I don't know. I'm not sure. I don't know what's, what's going on there. Um, it's true, Jerry Lewis's dad was really hard on him. How Just how hard on him, I'm not really sure. But he was hard on him. And he would withhold praise for him from, from him. He would withhold praise from him unless he did a really, really amazing job on something. So, yeah, he was tough on him. And I wonder if that, some of that rubbed off on the way he was to his sons. Yeah, he was really tough on him as well. But this isn't the sort of thing that's common knowledge. It's not exactly common knowledge. What we know about Jerry Lewis is what we see on TV, interviews. He doesn't give too many really telling interviews. We thought he was this really high energy, happy guy that had goofy expressions and just loved to be funny and sociable. You see that side of him, but there really were two sides to him apparently. There was this private side to him that was a lot more, uh, could be a lot more, you know, just a different kind of guy. But even that being the case, you know, he's dead now. So whatever shortcomings he has in that regard, he's going to have to deal with in the afterlife. Assuming there is one, right? But I do, I do believe there is one. So, I kind of prefer to see Jerry Lewis, myself personally, in a way that you see him via his movies and his all that stuff. And what he did that way. I think most of us prefer to see him that way, rather than think too much on the way he was outside of that stuff. We know that at least he's not demonic, at least that word. You, we know he's not evil. He's not an evil man. He, he still had principles he lived by, of course. But it's true. I mean, there, there were some things about him that I think aren't as common, that perhaps have something to do with, again, that treatment of his family that doesn't, doesn't really bode well in most of the, our ideas of good character. But his son that I saw in an interview regarding this very thing seemed to, I mean, he didn't, he didn't see, he wasn't in tears or anything. He, I suppose all the sons are managing it this okay. They kind of, I'm sure that they just knew their dad really well and maybe they just tried to make the best of it, however things were. So I, you know, have maybe some questions for Jerry Lewis after this life. Maybe he doesn't, he wouldn't want to answer them, but if he doesn't answer my questions in that respect, then he would at least have to answer God's questions. <laughs> Again, as you know, and that's just assuming that, I mean, let's just look at this from a theistic afterlife standpoint. If you don't believe in afterlife, then what, whatever. But, um, but I prefer to see him in that more upbeat way, just for my own happiness, just for my own sanity. You might say it's a lie, maybe you say it's just an act. He really was a more miserable person. But you can't you can't fake those things that he did. Um, there definitely was a side to Jerry that was um, a warm-hearted kind of thing. But I wonder, again, if a lot of that intensity, or we'll just say, um, again, um, a father who's hard to please comes from his dad. You know, we, all, we all know that Michael Jackson 
his father was extremely abusive to him. And uh, Michael Jackson turned out quite a bit different than his father. Quite a bit. He was a lot more... Um, just, I mean... Uh, aside from all the other... St I know. I'm just saying Michael Jackson was very free. He was very free with his compliments and with his praise and with his, you know, attention and with his stuff, money, and with his, you know, whatever, food, buy stuff. You know, McCoy, I know, I know, I know, there's all the, I know. <laughs> I'm just saying, it isn't always the case that if a father is abusive or is withholding of love and praise for his kids, it's not always the case that their kids is, are, are, a, are the same way or a similar way. It's often the case that sometimes the kids are, you know, they, they, they are very determined not to be that way. I, I have relatives, I could talk about this even from a far more guessable standpoint, that this, this hits home for me a little bit. But we won't get into that now. If you guys have questions about that, we can, I can mention that in a private message. Not my own family, this has nothing, my, my, my dad is amazing. My dad's amazing, so it's not my dad at all. Um, but it's just people that are close to me that I, you know, I know who they are. This sort of thing is something that does come up a lot. I think in different people, in modern times, you might see this more as an abusive kind of thing. In earlier times, we just see this as how do you how do you rear a child? How do you how do you parent? And if you need to be tough on them, you need to be tough on them. And there was, you know, we all know that in previous eras, that it was more of a common, it was somewhat more of a common thing for a parent to get out their belt and whack a kid if they're misbehaving or something. Times change. You know, so. so, Jerry Lewis. What do I think of him overall, despite, despite all this stuff? Um, it's, it's not a question of uh, for me, it's not if, regarding Jerry Lewis. It's, it's not. I think he's a better man than a worse man. I, I think if you want to put him on one side or another, good or evil, I'd say he's on the good side. I just don't think he's very far into that good side because of how he treated his family. But it wasn't as abusive. It sounds. It sounds like it wasn't quite as abusive as a. Uh, Michael Jackson's father was even worse, I think, to his family, and an adulterer, and... But yeah, it's commendable that he worked so hard to steal plant, for sure. I, you know, I wonder sometimes if Michael Jackson's father, by the way, was just very miserable in a way. I think I understand maybe why that would be, and why he's so... expected so much from his boys, because he, he worked at a steel plant, he didn't... wasn't able to do those things in his life, and maybe... He wanted to be the father, he wanted to assert his role as being a father that way. And anyway, I'm not trying to defend the man, I'm just saying I, I, I understand a bit about that sort of thing too. So anyway, going on to other comedians here. And I, I might touch on these a bit more, we might have to make other videos in the future about the subject. Contrasting somewhat here, um, starting, starting with comedians again. Let's look at, uh, and I think I, I've, always, I've already talked about uh, Jim Carrey before, I think. I don't think I need to get into Jim Carrey very much. We all know that he's... He has a lot of emotion that he... We all know he's... He has a sensitivity and emotion about him, even though he doesn't. He often doesn't show it. And he seems the opposite of that. He's, he is a very emotional person. And, you know, I feel for him still. What he's still going through. And I know what... I think I have a pretty good idea what he is going through. And again, I I see Jim Carrey as being a good person, but I didn't want to talk about Jim too much this time because I talked about him before. Um, but yeah, Jim. Anyway, so, um, okay. Robin Williams. Um, well, his dad is kind of a trend here. Notice Jerry Lewis's dad was tough on him. Jim Carrey's dad was kind of tough on him. We did some things that were... Hmm, he didn't really like too much sometimes. And 
but Robin Williams' dad, also very tough on him. And more of a work 40 hours a day, or, I'm sorry, 40 hours a week, you know, work, work, work. Right, come home, have your meat and potatoes, kiss your wife, maybe go to bed at some point after reading paper or something. Right, he was just, that was his, his thing. Um, but Robin was, wasn't like that at all. And he wanted to, he had, had a very impish kind of way about him. And it was fun to be around. Everybody knows, a lot of people you guys know, committed suicide. You might have heard other things about Robin. Uh, everything from he allowed demons to possess him before he gave stand up comedy routines or whatever, to you might have heard of how he got along with his co star on More Community. Right? You probably. Um, you might know more about his personal life in, still than me. Um, you might know how he felt about, you know, for instance, uh, Christopher Reeve, which was very positive, you know. Um, Robin Williams is a very easy person to be friends with, I think. Really. I mean, and he also is extremely intelligent, extremely wise in so many respects, when he got, especially when he got older. But he was just so... He had a very affable nature, more than... I know, certainly more than even Jerry Lewis in a way, but but absolutely I could totally talk to Robin by anything. Of course, he did darker movies toward the end of his life as his own choice, you know. The thing about Robin Williams is that I, you think that Jim Carrey is intelligent, and he is. You think that Jerry Lewis is intelligent, and he is. Robin Williams, in some respects, is on a whole other level of intelligence. In some respects, trust me, he's... That guy is really... And it's, it's, it's not that he's just intelligent. He's not, not just socially really intelligent, but he's really, he's, he was quick as a whip. Quick as a whip regarding, you know, the spontaneous humor thing. He could do the slapstick, but he also do just, you know, and it's just an insane level of intelligence when it comes to humor, but also the human condition, right? Just knowing kind of how to just to deal with things and look at the, you know have a, some things are tough to, that you're going through and know how to deal with them in a way that were, would help you feel better I mean maybe a lot of it you know we can talk about chemical depression on drugs and stuff whatever but I, I can't say enough good about Robin Williams I really do think he was a good man but I think that there's an extra element with Robin Williams that's a little different than Jerry Lewis or in some respects um, Jim Carrey Jim Carrey has just been very secularized by Hollywood. I still think he has a lot of good in him. Rob Williams, on the other hand, I think some... I'm not sure how this happened, but somehow I think he actually did get involved with... Uh, demons. And having demons assist him in his stand-up act. Because, kind of like you see with um, Beyoncé, Beyonce became a very different person when she, and I think I mentioned this before in some other video again, but Beyonce did become a very different person when Sasha Fierce would inhabit her body. You saw this, if you saw the, you know, this whole video, I and mean, I remember seeing this live um, once in, some, I was at a, another person's house, a father that I teach his, his, his kid's piano, it was a while back, and um, Robin wouldn't change so much in terms of what he looked like. <laughs> but just think about going from making a movie like Hook or um, I don't know. He was pretty crazy in a lot of in some movies. And you might say this is just Robert. But when you go to the stand-up routine, I mean, there were things he did and said that were shockingly evil. You think Eddie Murphy is raw and stuff? Nah, Eddie Murphy doesn't have anything on Robin. Not even, not even remotely. In a way, I mean, when I say not nothing, he didn't have anything on him. I mean, Robin Williams has been far more vulgar than Murphy ever dreamed of being. Not to mention most other comedians. And so yeah, that's why I, I, I do believe. And Robin has said of himself that he, just, he can't describe it, but there's something that happens before he goes into stand-up where 
he does feel like there's some kind of entity that inhabits him. So this is what makes Robin a little different. I ex explain some of the manic energy that maybe he has. Which, and he's a very energetic guy. You know, all that has to happen is some dark spirit to kind of be whispering things constantly. These really nasty jokes. He doesn't have to fully possess it. Right? There's a lot of that semi thing, domination. Well, not, there's a lot of just kind of this. Most of the time, for most people, it's very subtle. Or it's like a spirit kind of, kind of is next to you, or he's kind of attached to you, but he doesn't fully possess you. You know, that that happens so much more than full-on possessions. And because we have been all these movies about possession, we have all these ideas about what that. What, ha what happens there but you know it's just uh, anyway so I'm going to try to mention a few other guys here Robin Williams was he a good guy or a bad guy he's, all, he's still again a good guy a bunch of, all these guys Jim Carrey Robin Williams Jim, and um, and Jerry Lewis they're all basically decent guys but you know certainly not quite what we would consider to be a godly person or a, a very righteous person. Like, I have a bust of Jesus up here, right? <sighs> okay. Well, so which comedians maybe were either... We're getting all these mid middle of the road, or, or kind of good, but kind of middle of the road, or whatever. Or, you know, we like them, but have some serious flaws. So, how were, who were just truly evil comedians, some evil comedians, versus very good comedians, right? Who, who are some of these guys? So, I'm curious what you guys think about Bill Murray. Bill Murray, it's not, you can get into religion and all this, I know, his brother, da 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 da, Baptist, whatever. But Bill actually is, in my opinion, a actually a better man than I, any of these three guys, in my opinion. My opinion, of course. Um, a lot of reasons why. I just think, uh, yeah, I can't explain it, but, you know, you feel, you can't help but feel more real warmth from him. Robin had that side to him. But for Robin, it was almost like there are a lot of things that he was battling that we don't even know the half of, really, or the quarter of. Maybe sometimes you see a few of these things that might, he might have been battling in his darker movies occasionally. Maybe not. But he wasn't afraid to tackle those things. But Robin was so, again, very intelligent and very perceptive about so many things. So I, some of it, so much of his humor comes from that, you know, crazy level of quick energy and intelligence. And um, Jim Carrey is still a very uh, kind person. He's very, I think, really, if you just had a real conversation with him. He's, he's really, he'd be a great person, just like Robin, he's also a great person to talk to. He's just, again, kind of secular, secularized by Hollywood. I think kind of, he's just trying to find himself again somewhat. He's trying to, he's asking all the right questions in a way, but maybe he's just not, uh, anyway, you know, he's just, he's just very secular and and, you know, we can get into Jim Carrey. That's, that's uh, anyway. I, know what I'm, I think I know what I'm trying to say, but it's just not sounding right. Anyway, and and Jerry Lewis was just kind of a little, maybe a little bit self-centered, or maybe just very stubborn in a certain way of thinking. It might seem a little bit outdated by this point in time, sure, truly. But Bill Murray is a solid guy. I'm not saying he's Jesus, right? I'm just saying he really is a better man. You know, in so many respects, and has a, just we know that the way he is, even when he's doing Ghostbusters or you know, Groundhog Day, or, we know we can you can you can feel that humor. That's and you actually can feel kind of the you know him patting on the back a lot of times. It's, it's gonna be okay. Hey. And making faces just you know, and that's Bill. And actually, this he, he, he can sense kind of that that goodness about him even with his humor that's what I'm talking about I mean there's something there's something very real there and anyway so Bill Murray is there is a much better kind of comedian and you're thinking oh who's the clean comedians right 
clean ones. I, Bill Murray doesn't. Yeah, you know, I did stand up, but my, as far as I know, he's pretty okay there. Correct me if I'm wrong. Maybe I, I don't know. Um, and look, John Belushi was just kind of into, into drugs at one point, and he was just kind of a crazy man, big, big crazy man, kind of like. Um, Oh, that other guy that died a while back. This is a big boy. Um, Chris Farley. And both those guys, again, we're talking middle, middling arena. Still probably okay, guys, you know. Enjoy, I think probably with Belushi, of course he's a good guy, you know. But there are a lot of things that are fairly common to man that little vices that we get into. We just know about drugs, but anyway. Um, should we talk about an evil guy for a second? Contrast with Bill Murray. And by the way, John Candy, he did some funny stuff. John Candy, um, just like Bill, probably, I don't want to compare the two really in terms of the character, but John is, John Candy was an awesome guy as well. Awesome. I can't say anything bad about him. Just amazing. Greatest guy in the world, John Candy. Absolutely. And so many other people there. Like, you know, so who would be evil? Really, it's a comedian. Oh, well, sure you guys have some ideas. <laughs> well, you know, there's off color, but then there's evil. Hmm. Maybe it's just something I don't like to contemplate too much. But, hmm. I, I think maybe a good way of going about thinking about something that might contrast with Bill Murray is if you see there's a lot of comedians that maybe tell sexual jokes but there's a small percentage of them that you really feel like they just don't care about people like they don't care at all I mean there's the kind of commonly think oh I don't care if you're offended it's comedy but, but there are some people that genuinely mean that it, it, so, you know comedians don't want to they don't want you to have they don't want you to feel bad about what it, no but they don't really don't they don't really want you to feel that way but there are some comedians there are minority comedians that actually don't actually care about you they don't care how you feel at all and they just it's it's they're all about the wrong things unfortunately I can't think of really too many of people in that arena off the top of my head because maybe I just haven't of course seen those people um, those kinds of people Again, I'm thinking about, you know, who would be like that? Um, hmm. Don't worry. I'll think of one here in a second. I'm just kind of ad-libbing here for <laughs> for a bit. Um, well. Hmm. And Dave Chappelle's fine. We don't even need to mention Dave Chappelle. He's, he's, we know he's, again, with the sexual humor, but it's you know that he's actually an okay guy. He's fine to talk to. Um, hmm. You have Russell Peters, who's obviously kind of a similar ballpark, but he's still a decent guy, Indian. Hmm. Still thinking. Bear with me here for a second. If I, if I get to half an hour before thinking of anyone, I'm going to just close it there. But, <laughs> Sorry. Um, maybe I just don't know as many comedians as some of you guys. I don't say Chevy Chase is... Look, Chevy Chase is just deadpan and good at the, what, the Fletch thing. Okay, so not Chevy Chase. I'm not talking about Chevy Chase. <laughs> okay. Yes, I know, I don't know. Um... Well, um, I never really listened to Jonathan Winters too much. And I wouldn't say he's bad, but he was, him and Robin Williams were like, they did their thing, kind of off color um, sometimes, a lot of times. Um, oh boy, 20 seconds left here. Hmm. No, <laughs> just going through. Um, 
Hmm. Darn it. <laughs> well, you know, maybe it's just because I see evil as being so heinously evil. Evil. Maybe that's what it is. Maybe it's just a lot of things. We think we want to think well of people, but maybe, maybe some of these folks are worse than I want to think they are. But I don't want to be the judge. Is the thing. All I want to do is pay more attention to myself this way. And besides, when you, if you have someone who's very, a very, very dark, evil person, they're not very entertaining to begin with a lot of times. Not, not really. Um, so, anyway, if you guys, if you guys have any ideas of evil, truly like darker, evil comedians, let me know. I might pick up a subject a bit later, uh, comedians and character. Um, <clears throat> but uh, by all means, this is definitely a topic where you guys can disagree with me as much as you want to. And I haven't said anything that was, of course, to my knowledge, untrue or intended to uh, defame anybody, of course. So, um, if anything, I've probably been a bit rosy-eyed, rosy you know, put on the rose-colored goggles. But, but these are all... You know, it's hard, it's hard to say that someone's evil that you've liked something they were in. We, we all like, we're all that way, you know. Um, but again, you, you probably have that minority, those minority of comedians, if, if you, they truly don't care about how someone thinks of them. No, no, it's not that. If they don't care about a person's feelings at all. You know, and they just don't care. They don't care. You can say whatever they want to say, they just don't care. That's, that's dangerous territory right there. I mean, when I say don't care, you have comedians that have to deal with hecklers. But then a lot of people that go to these, these comedy shows, you know, they're more sensitive folks or whatever. And, I, I'm, you know, it's the kind of comedian that would just rip into someone. I'm not talking about Michael Richards, that whole racial thing. That, that, that's, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about someone that just offends your sensibilities. And, and in a way, well... I'll, I just don't care about anyone except for themselves, that kind of person. Anyway, leave me with thoughts and comments below. Catch you guys later.